Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Rich and welcome to Crash Course Hobbies. This is part two in the Getting Started with Warhammer video series. Uh, we're gonna be talking about painting supplies that you need, specifically five essential items to get you going. If you missed the first part of the video and you wanna check out the five essential items for building your models, you can find that one um, up here, up here somewhere. Uh, but let's get started into what you need to start painting. Now the first item should be pretty self-explanatory, but you need paint. Um, there's a couple of different categories of what you'll need to get started. The first thing you're gonna want is some primer. Uh, what I would recommend getting is just a basic can of Rust-Oleum flat black primer. I would not recommend getting the paint and primer. So there's a good chance you might already have some of this in your garage. If not, it's like three to four bucks at a hardware store or Walmart or something like that. Um, would recommend picking up one of those. The reason I don't recommend getting like a paint and primer spray paint is it tends to be thicker because it's meant to cover all kinds of stuff in one coat. Just make sure you get one that says that it bonds to plastic because that's really important for our little plastic toys. Now, you can also pick up the more miniature specific brands like the stuff from Citadel. They've got their different color primers and those do match the specific GW paint ranges. So if you wanna prime all your Space Marines a certain blue or lead belcher or something like that, there is some value there. Although typically in my experience, it's not necessarily worth picking up a 20 some dollar rattle can. But if you're trying to color match everything, it could save you time and time is money. So that's really kind of your call. Um, Army Painter's got some decent stuff too. Um, it really just comes down to how much you wanna spend for the primer that you're looking to do. But in my experience, I would recommend just picking up some Rust-Oleum flat black primer and then a can of flat white primer as well. And you can do a bit of a zenithal there. And once you've got your minis primed, you're going to need your miniature paint. Now, typically I wouldn't recommend starting with something like Apple Barrel Crafts paints or you know, what you, whatever you might have laying around the house. This is one area where investing a little bit of money from the get-go is super beneficial. There's a couple of starter sets that are really worth it. Currently right now, uh, Vallejo has a really great game color starter set. I think it's like 16 paints. You get a couple of metallics. You get all the really good core starter colors. Um, and on Amazon, it's on sale for like 25 bucks right now, which is a steal. And I think part of that is because they're about to come out with their new game color range. And that will mean that this current set is probably not gonna be around for too much longer, but if you're getting into it now and you can find it, I'll link it down below for you at that price. It's a really, really good deal for some quality paints to get you started. Another set I highly recommend is Monument Hobbies Starter Set. Their base set is 24 paints and it's got all the colors you need to get going. And uh, Pro Acryl is my personal favorite paint range. Highly recommend it. Um, you could also look at something like Army Painter, which is very readily available all over the place. And while Army Painter is getting better, I don't think they're quite where they want to be just yet. Um, you could look at like Speed Paints, uh, which are better from Army Painter for doing quick kind of wash style painting uh, in the contrast method, which we'll talk about again kind of later. But if it were me and I was telling my friend or somebody to pick up a basic set of paints to get started, the Vallejo Game Color Set or the Monument Hobbies Pro Curl Base Set would be where I would go to get going or just go up to your local store, check out you know whether you know Citadel paints are fine too. So you could pick out just a handful of colors that you're specifically wanting to use with your army. And you don't need to go out and buy a whole range of paints or things that you're not gonna use. Just pick out you know maybe eight colors or so that you feel like you're going to use with your specific army. And then maybe like an ivory or a white or black so that you can mix up different colors. Once you got your paints, you're gonna need some brushes. Now this is an area where you can go crazy and spend a lot of money, or you can start off and go with something fairly cheap. Now, at the beginning, you're probably not gonna know a whole lot about uh, brush care and all that kind of stuff, which is understandable. So you wanna start with something cheap that can still give you a decent point. There's a couple of different brands of budget brushes that I really like you can get on Amazon for dirt cheap. One of them's called Falling in Art. They're round brushes. They give you a bunch of different sizes. So some of the really huge ones are great for terrain. And then there's also some pretty tiny ones that do really great for miniatures as well. I think it's like seven or eight bucks for a whole pack of brushes. And then there's some other more budget-friendly brands that honestly don't remember the name because they're just like kind of Chinese knockoff brands. But you can get a pack of like eight 
uh, multi-pack brushes for super, super cheap. Like six bucks gives you, gets you like six whole packs of brushes. So I'll link those down for you as well. And then as you get into it a little bit more, you can pick up something like a Windsor and Newton Series 7 or a Raphael 8404 or something like that, these Sable hair brushes. But that's a little bit more advanced. So when you're getting started, you're not gonna necessarily wanna drop 25 bucks on a brush when you could get a whole Vallejo paint set for that right now on sale. So, you know, I would recommend getting decent quality paints and brushes that aren't, you know, totally terrible. You still want it to get a good tip but you're probably gonna mess them up for a while until you learn to take good care of them. So that's an area where you don't need to go too crazy right now. One area that I do think it's important to drop a little bit of money though is on a wet palette. Now our miniature paints that we use tend to dry really quickly. And so if you just put them on a paper plate or like in a little plastic hard palette or something, they're gonna dry out really quickly. And as you get more advanced with, with miniature painting and you wanna try wet blending or you wanna try mixing up glazes or different things like that, uh, having a wet palette is super beneficial and essentially all it is is a little plastic box you can make one yourself at a tupperware too but it has a couple of sponges in it you get water on the sponges and you put a little bit of parchment paper or some <laughs> wet palette paper but the whole thing in here is that it helps keep your paints from drying out and a lot of times they'll come with the lid so that you can paint put the lid back on it and come back later for another session and your paints are still workable so a uh, couple of that I recommend, the one from Army Painter is fine. It's a little bit small. It's around 25, 30 bucks though. So for what you get, it's not too bad. My personal favorite are the ones from Redgrass Games. They'll come with a couple of sponges and 50 sheets of wet palette paper. Um, you can get the regular one for 30 bucks, which is a little bit smaller. And then they've got the Studio XL, uh, which is gonna run you about 50 to 60 bucks. So the little one is more than enough to get you going. But I do think, you know, if I were, getting started this kind of list that i'm sharing with you guys right now was if there were just five things that i would use getting started wet palette is definitely one of them pick up a red grass games wet palette next you're going to need some light and light is super important for miniature painting because we've got little details we need to be able to see and a lot of times if a regular room lighting is just not going to be enough to get good visual on what you're doing and good color representation on what you're doing. So, um, you know, something around 5,600 Kelvin is what you're gonna want for good color temperature. If your light's too yellow, it's gonna skew what the paints look like as well as if it's too blue. So 5,600 tends to be a really good range to kind of try to hit uh, for readily available lights that's gonna give you a more accurate color representation. There's two models of lights that I recommend. I've got both of them here in my studio. There's a smaller, cheaper one, which I will link down below for you. Um, that one runs about 40 bucks and it'd be just fine to clamp onto your desk and get you started for a while. I painted with this light for about two years before upgrading to this Neepty light here, which is a lot bigger, which you'll notice like a lot of people on YouTube use it and it's just kind of the standard uh, mini painter light. That one's like 110 bucks, um, much bigger range and, and that sort of thing. But you don't necessarily need to go crazy there, but I would recommend, even if it's something like a desk light, a uh, cheap one from Ikea for like 10 bucks, if you can replace the bulb at least to get somewhere closer to that color temperature would be good. And then eventually upgrading to something that you can move around and you know, kind of pose to where you need it would be helpful. But again, you're painting mini. So whatever you can do to get yourself up and running is fine. And then eventually this is where you, you know, ideally want to get. And lastly, just a painting handle, something to hold the miniature on is really helpful. It gives you a little bit more control, helps with brush stability, allows you to put the mini in some kind of holder and do your triangle of power stance to be a little bit more stable. Um, you could pick up the ones. I like the ones from GW. They're relatively inexpensive, like 15, 20 bucks, depending on the size. Or you could even go to like Home Depot and buy just like a thicker dowel and cut it down to size, get some blue poster tack, slap it on there, and you're good to go. Uh, but just something, when I got started, I used a red Solo cup with some double-sided tape on the top and just popped the minis on there. Anything that just helps you get a little bit more control. But again, ideally, one of these products would be a good way to go. Anyways, guys, that's it for this five essential items to get started with painting. I definitely recommend everything that I've got linked down below. Again, these are affiliate links, so if you want to help support my channel. But of course, I do recommend going out and supporting your friendly local game stores whenever possible. These guys rely on all this stuff to keep going, and they provide you with a safe place to enjoy your hobby with your friends. So with that, thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.